the Midlands' reputation as a powerhouse for motor car production is well recognised throughout the world. But less known is its role in the birth of more eco-friendly methods of transport. This old dynamo might not look very exciting, but printed on its base is the name of one of Britain's most progressive inventors, Thomas Parker, hailed by his peers as the Edison of Europe. Now, you're probably thinking, Thomas Parker? Never heard of him. But Parker was the mastermind behind what's been described as the world's first practical electric car. And amazingly, he built it in 1884. That's over 10 years before Britain built its first petrol car. Yes, although it's easy to believe that the combustion engine car has always been the king of the road, the electric car was on the road first. And Thomas Parker was at the forefront of this eco-friendly technology, over a hundred years before the term eco-friendly had even been invented. And where did Thomas Parker build and test drive this momentous piece of world automotive history? Right here in Wolverhampton. Born in Ironbridge in 1843, Parker spent most of his life in the Midlands, moving to Wolverhampton in 1882 to design and build dynamos. It was here that his vision for an electrically powered automobile took shape. To uncover the amazing story of Thomas Parker's ingenious vehicle, I'm off to Wolverhampton City Archives to meet up with local historian Bev Parker. <laughs> no relation. Bev, what do we know about Parker's car? This is what we think his first car would have looked like. Quite a strange <laughs> thing. That looks like three men riding a giant pram. <laughs> but it does. Um, but it was built like that for a purpose. I mean, what other components here? I can see, well, quite clearly, a motor, then a large container at the back, which I guess must have been where the batteries were. That's right. Yes, there, there would have been quite large batteries by modern standards. All of the components were designed by Tom Parker and made in the factory. So every single part of the system to power his car, he designed himself. Oh, he yes. designed every single part, yes, yeah, yeah. So he was innovating batteries, motors, and the vehicles themselves. Yes, 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 he was. He was a, really ahead of the game. This must have been an amazing sight in Wolverhampton, seeing this trundling along the streets. It must have been. It's very hard to appreciate what people must have thought of it. Uh, it was the only one, and they would never have seen one before, probably. Eventually, they might have got used to seeing it travelling daily to and from his work. So Parker potentially could have been the world's first electric car commuter. Yes, he used this as a form of transport every day. <laughs> That's amazing. It's Something we take for granted now, commuting to work in an automobile, he was pioneering that concept as well. He was, yes. Oh, yes, he was. Although others had experimented with electric cars, Parker's was the first truly practical version. He even designed a steam-powered generator to recharge it for his daily commute. Unfortunately, there are no remains of Parker's original cars for us to marvel at but we can retrace the original route of his daily commute to work in his groundbreaking electric car. So this is the route that Thomas Parker would have taken in his electric car? Yes, it is. It's uh, quite a steep hill. He gave a talk to the RAC and he moaned about the gradients in this area, particularly when his batteries were low <laughs> and the car struggled <laughs> to get up the hill. So it must have been quite a performance. Well, it probably looked quite different than it does today, the road conditions. Today we used to have well looked after tarmac roads and then they were very rough and ready in comparison. So even more of a struggle to get around even, on an electric vehicle. Even more of a struggle, yes, absolutely. So what kind of speed would have Parker have been going at? So we're looking at the Red Flag Act and we're looking at two miles an hour maximum. Very, very slow indeed. What about this walking pace? About walking pace, <laughs> that's about what we're doing now. Parker's car would have had to obey the strict 1865 Locomotive Act. It enforced an urban speed limit of two miles an hour for the new fangled automobiles, with each vehicle needing two drivers plus a third person waving a red flag at least 180 feet in front. Why did electric vehicles die out? It's come the internal combustion engine, 
over the next few years that was far more powerful, faster. You didn't have to charge batteries. Um, so it's much more convenient. Mm. So he's kind of a visionary ahead of his time because now 120 years later, yes. there's now a reverse back. Yes, it's gone right back to the start again. And uh, that's the future, of course. It seems then that Thomas Parker was simply way ahead of his time. His vision of automobiles powered by electricity whizzing along our roads wouldn't start to come true for over 120 years. The other amazing thing is that Parker would have had to use extremely primitive battery technology to power his futuristic prototypes. So here we have our rudimentary battery. Inside we've got one electrode made of zinc, the other electrode made of copper. There are chemical reactions occurring on each of those electrodes because they're both inside a bath of household vinegar. On the zinc electrode, the chemical process is creating electrons. On the copper electrode, the chemical process needs electrons. And how do they get from one side to the other? They flow around the electric circuit, which gives us, well, electricity. And if we have a look here, we're getting about 0.9 volts. Now that's not a massive amount. And if we have loads of these cells in series, we can do something useful with that electricity like illuminate a very small bulb. So if you attach the electrodes and the final attachment to the LED here, and yes, it's actually lit up. So there is enough power here being produced by this chemical process to light the LED. Now, Thomas Parker needed much more oomph to power his car. So his batteries would have used sulfuric acid and lead plates instead, which would have also made it rechargeable. 